The intro animation of Iman Gaji, that's what we're gonna create today and it will look like this. So in this video of today, I'm gonna teach you how to create a grid, how to create some basic 3D animations and also how to create some text animations. And like always, we'll do this in three easy steps. One, we'll create the objects. Two, we create the text animation. And three, we'll create the camera movement. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Like always, we'll create a new composition. 4K, 25 frames per second, okay? And there's one important thing before we start. Thanks for all the comments and likes and views. It has been amazing. I will definitely keep creating these videos, but I also really enjoy hearing the feedback. Back to After Effects. So we're gonna create a grid. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a ellipse first so we go to the ellipse tool by holding our mouse on the rectangle tool now for now you can just create a really small circle we'll shift to create the circle we'll zoom in and as you can see the style is definitely not right we're gonna change the stroke to none and we're gonna change the fill in this case first to white so we can at least see it properly now we're gonna add a second shape a rectangle tool now this doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna change this later on we're gonna style it later on. So we're gonna create a basically a square to this side and then a square to the bottom. And it will all make sense in the moment. Because what we're now gonna do is we're gonna add a repeater. We'll open the repeater. We go to transform and you'll see the position of 100. We're gonna move that out. So for example, to here, I'm gonna zoom out a bit to see what the style looks like, but this looks great. We're gonna add another repeater, repeater. We'll open this repeater and then we're going to go to transform and then first position on zero. Basically making sure that this also connects something like this. Now we're going to align it a bit better. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. At the end of the day, people won't see this. But if you want to be a pixel peeper, you can always go into the rectangles, uh, open up the rectangle path and change the size accordingly. Uh, for example, uh, we'll make this 15 and then we go to the other rectangle. We open that or we'll make sure that this is 15 too. Then we're gonna make sure that this is in the middle of the circle. The same goes for this one. And then what we even can do is change the circle size. So we go to ellipse, transform or ellipse path and we can change the size here, make it a bit more smaller until as you can see, our grid doesn't align anymore. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit. I'm gonna change the scale to something like this. And this really messes with my brain. It's like an illusion where you can see these black balls in between. Maybe this is just on the screen and I'm not the only one seeing this. Uh, what you can do now is make sure that the lines or as we would call them here, the rectangles, that are aligned properly. So we're gonna move them a bit out. And I don't know if that's gonna work. I'm gonna make it a bit more bigger, something like this take the other one same thing move it down so it connects properly and as you can see we already almost have a grid now the only thing that we have to do is change the amount of copies so this is basically the amount of times it will copy it over and we're gonna change this for example really high to 30 and making sure that it will almost infinitely move on and then for the other repeater the same thing we're also gonna change this to 30 and as you can see, you have a really nice grid. We're gonna move this over, perfect, something like this. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but at least you have a, a, a nice looking grid. Now we're gonna go to the rounded rectangle. To make sure nothing is selected and we're gonna create three blocks. So basically, something like this. We can always move it later on. Make sure the roundness is quite high. I would say now around 65 would be, would be nice. Fill color, we're gonna make them black. We're gonna give them a stroke by clicking on stroke and then we're gonna put a gradient on it. Can be a radial or linear. I'm gonna try it linear first, press okay. And this should work if we're gonna change the stroke. And this is great. So we're gonna change this color to black. Then this we're gonna delete and this we're gonna change to quite like a prominent blue. I would say something like this. Now we're gonna change the stroke size to around 20. And we're gonna move this linear gradient a bit out like this. We're gonna click away and we'll see that we have this cool border around it. I'm gonna move it even a bit more. And what we also can do is put a glow on this to make it a bit more soft glow. And we'll just throw it on something like this. And that looks really cool. What we can do now is duplicate them. So I'll move this a bit to the center. Command D or Control D on Windows. Move this over to the center. 
and then the last one to the right. Now you can align it a bit more, but as we're using this grid, we can actually use it for it. And what you can also do is basically change the gradient or on the middle one. So what we can do is go to our gradient by opening this layer and we go to contents, rectangle, gradient stroke, and then maybe it will move it a bit like to the middle, change the stroke and move this to here. And we're going to add black and the same with the last one. We're going to move this a bit, maybe to the right or something. Now we're going to turn down the opacity of the grid by pressing T of transparency. We're going to put it really low, something like maybe like six or maybe even a bit higher. And then we're going to add a gradient overlay, uh, basically creating a new solid. The color doesn't matter for now because we're going to add a gradient, gradient ramp black to dark red, something like this. Change the position of the ramp, something like this. Gonna move this down and then we're gonna go through our blending modes. So I think add would work for this effect. And I think our grid can even be a bit more thinner. I was gonna change the stroke size for the layers to make it a bit more smooth and maybe change the fill color to really dark blue so they pop a bit more. Copy this code and there we go. Now the only thing that's missing is the text, which we're gonna add in the next step. So in this step, we're gonna add text and first uh, we're gonna add the numbers. So this is gonna be one. We're just gonna pick a really thick font for this. And it's probably in the uh, font that Iman uses, but we're gonna also change the width of the font a bit. So for example, to 140%. Now we're just gonna duplicate this, move it over. There's gonna be two, three. Now this looks cool. Now we need the words category above this. So the category, we're gonna change of course the font size to maybe 150, oh, 150. Uh, that's still too big. We're gonna change this to medium. We're gonna change the width to 100% and make it even smaller, move it, something like this. Now the only thing is missing is a shadow casting on that number one which is quite easy. We're just gonna create a shadow map for all the letters because they're not gonna move anyway. So we're just gonna create a new solid color, black. Okay, okay. We're gonna change this into a rectangle tool. We're gonna put a rectangle, I would say around this, feather it, something like this, maybe move it a bit up. Now we're gonna select all the layers and we're gonna put a track mat on the black solid and then we're gonna invert it and there you go our shadow map, duplicate the category, something like this. And then lastly, the zero to 10K, which is zero to 10K, stupid dollar sign, Avenir. These still need to be animated, but that's what we're gonna do in our next step where we animate things and finalize the project. So basically this comes out of thin air uh, with a small feather. And this is a really basic transition or like text animation, but I love this animation. I'm using it for a lot of my clients anyway. What you do is just create a solid layer, new solid. Color in this case, doesn't matter, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna give it a color so we can really easily see what we're doing. I'm gonna add a layer. And since these text animations are quite simple too, I'm just gonna use it for all of them. So what we're gonna do is change the mask by extending it to the right and extending it a bit to the left. And we press F for feather. We'll feather it a bit. I'm also gonna move it more down. What we're now gonna do is we'll select all the text layers. We're gonna, again, change the mat to our solid that we created. Perfect. Now I also see that the solid is already in place. So what we're gonna do is move it a bit more down, something like this. And then we're gonna invert the mask by clicking on the invert button. Now what we can do is animate this text in, and this is really easy, guys. We'll just move a bit to the right, for example, one second, press the stopwatch on position, press the keyframe button, move it down. Perfect. Select the last keyframe, Keyframe assistant, easy ease. Go to the curve editor and we're gonna move this over. Perfect, we're gonna basically make sure that it is a bit more smooth. This looks really cool. We're gonna activate the motion blur by clicking toggle switches. And there we go. And we're gonna add it to the other layers too. Now what we can even do is copy this over, but in this case, it's not that hard. If we copy this over now, it will move to the left, which we don't want. But what we can do is we open our position by pressing P. We'll have these keyframes selected and we're gonna move it over like this. Perfect. And we're gonna do the same with the last layer. Now, the only thing we have to do is select all the layers, make sure that they're not on before. We're gonna move this over. We're gonna move this over. 
and now it should zoom out a bit smoothly coming to the frame now you might ask yourself this looks a bit boring tom we want a bit of movement in it well we can do that we're going to use the 3d camera for that so we're going to except of our background we're going to pre-compose everything so we're going to select everything we're going to go to a layer pre-compose and we'll call this elements and this is basically the background we're going to make this 3d we're going to add a layer new camera the specific settings do matter but in this case we're gonna just press ok now i'm gonna press p for position and i'm gonna start zoomed out or what we can actually do is use these tools make sure that your render is on classic 3d and we're gonna first zoom in we'll open up our transform we're gonna also keyframe the point of interest and we're gonna use the this tool the pen under cursor tool so if you hold shift now, we can move over to number one. And what I would also like is that the layers are a bit 3D. So basically a bit flat. I would say maybe something like this, maybe a bit zoomed in. And now we're gonna, of course, select all the keyframes, keyframe assistance, easy ease. We'll add motion blur to everything. And we're gonna smooth this out a bit. So we're gonna drag it to the right, make sure that the keyframes are dragged out like this can even be a bit further and then there's one secret i'm going to show you and that's of course the famous glow that Eamon uses in every video uh, basically what you can do is you go to stylize glow we're just going to throw this on all, all of our elements and then we can just increase the glow radius and you can even change the glow intensity a bit lower if you don't like the effect and if we do that then you'll get an end result something like this now we would love to create more videos like this uh, breaking down someone's editing style vfx or lifestyle so drop your favorite youtuber down below definitely don't forget to subscribe to see the next video and then i thank you for watching bye